Okay, hi everyone. Uh, first, let me introduce you, uh, myself. I'm Ivan Pelnikov and I'm your uh, seminar teacher for these classes. Uh, well, I will be mostly for practice part, right? So uh, we'll do many fun things in R and I'm big R enthusiast. I mean, not big, but R enthusiast. And we'll learn uh, some basics of uh, uh, programming in R and how to do some uh, statistics there too. So let me uh, understand what, what did you do previous time? So could some, someone uh, explain what, what, what have you learned? Hey guys, do you hear me? Come on, don't be shy. Do you hear me? Yep, okay. Uh, we actually didn't discuss data frames uh, at least uh -huh. in R, as far as I remember, just the theoretical notions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let me do some screen, uh, screen share. And, okay. Uh, first, uh, I know whether you did it, but I really recommend when you work in R Studio, uh, the small things called projects. Uh, for example, uh, this is a project from uh, my Sunday screencast that I uh, have a stream on YouTube channel where every Sunday we and uh, Garik Maros do some analysis and share it uh, with people online. Uh, and every time I open this project and now I work with you and I do uh, it a separate in a separate project. It's very easy to use and it helps you to nice your work in, in R uh, with different like, projects and every project has its own directory uh, uh, and when you you can choose between them, you can close one project and open another and uh, you will have all these uh, variables that you created, all this, the scripts that were open and so on. So it's really easy to use and I really recommend it. So let me show you how it works. I do uh, file, new project, new directory, right? Uh, you can see a lot there, but just uh, choose new project. And let's create a link uh, master uh, link master twenty twenty one. Okay, uh, and I can even open it in another session to not close another session of our studio and to be able easily switch between them. So, okay. Uh, can I ask a question? Yep. Should we create the same link or what? Uh, should you create the same project? Yes. Uh, it's not necessary, but I really recommend you to try it by yourself. I mean, uh, I don't know how, how do you prefer to work uh, during seminars. Uh, it's, of course, it's different uh, to offline seminars, but personally, I really recommend you to try to uh, have two screens or one device where you can just do some programming and other device where you can see what I do. And uh, just try to follow me. I will try to be slow. Uh, yeah, I, I really recommend you to work this way, but of course you're free to choose whatever you want, however you want to work. So I really recommend you to do it like that. But if you want to, if you, just don't want, you can just proceed in other script, in other console and so on. Uh, do you know what is a like script, what is a console and what happened there in our studio? I hope you do, but just 
to, 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 to be sure. Uh, now you, you could really uh, you could really tell us uh, the difference uh, between uh, these uh, three windows. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, I think you worked. Uh, I think all of you worked with Python, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and was one simple question: What uh, uh, IDE you worked with in Python? Like you can write it, you can just uh, tell it in, uh, okay, just oh, however you want. Yeah, don't be shy, like what is, what your IDE of preference or where did you work with Python? Just to make everything sure. In Jupyter, in uh, Jupyter mm -hmm. notebooks. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jupyter, any other answers? I, I personally work in PyCharm. PyCharm, right. Any other choices? Any other answers? Or maybe you work too in uh, PyCharm uh, or Jupyter, you can tell it. Okay. Uh, usually, uh, when, I, uh, when I ask this question, people uh, answer that Jupyter, uh, PyCharm, usually now, sometimes people say, Bob Spider, that is something like a clone of um, MATLAB interface or R Studio, uh, or some people say about uh, like more professional IDEs like uh, uh, I don't know Emac, Vim, this kind of stuff that I don't know. Uh, and sometimes somebody is working in Notepad or Notepad plus plus. So in uh, in the Python world, there is a, there are many uh, IDEs and they compete to each other. Uh, in uh, um, our world, you have something uh, like uh, close, much more closer to, you know, like, uh, you know, like how to say, uh, well, how to say to not be allied to wish for rules about politics. You know, you have no choice, you know, like, uh, like in some countries. Uh, be because the one choice is, uh, is obviously better than everything else. Uh, and uh, people, uh, almost everyone who works with R, uh, especially for some simple tasks, uh, analytics and so on, they work in RStudio because it's very simple and effective uh, IDE that really works well with R. Uh, of course, you can work at, um, even in Jupyter or you can work with Python from RStudio somehow. I will not explain in details, but uh, usually work in our studio because it really it, it it's really simple and very efficient. So, uh, okay, let's go to from this. Uh, I will talk about this uh, uh, windows a bit more. So uh, this one uh, that I show now uh, uh, environment. Uh, it's really, really, if you work with MATLAB, for example, you really appreciate the existence of this stuff. Uh, it shows your variables in your environment. Uh, so, for example, you create a variable. I hope you know how to create variables because it's uh, very basic stuff. Uh, remember, you can create variables both this way and this way. Uh, and which one is more preferable? The first one. The first one, and yep. why? Do you have any ideas why? It's different from Python. Mm, no, I mean, not everything in R exists because we want to be different to, to Python. Actually, you know, well, no, uh, actually, uh, you can use both, and it's really just a matter of style, actually. So, uh, of course, there is some like recommended style, and uh, this way is more recommended just because of style. You you can really use uh, uh, either arrow or equal sign, and there are very small number of cases where these are different. But maybe you know. Uh, some difference, some small difference between uh, these two 
um, science in R in meaning, but it will be different. Second looks like logic expression. And it looks symmetrical, more symmetrical than the first one. Well, it's actually, um, yeah, um, of course, when you like uh, see this A equal two, for example, right? You think about it in mathematical sense, like uh, it's like equality. But, but in programming in general, this equal signs mean, means not uh, equality, uh, but uh, uh, assignment. So uh, you, you should not read it like A equals two, but A gets two. Right? Uh, so, and it's more or less the same in like everywhere, in <laughs> everywhere language, not only in R. So, okay. Uh, okay, uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, bum, bum, bum. Oh, okay, no, sorry. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay, uh, here you can uh, you can see uh, environment, you can see uh, with variables, so you can see I created a variable, uh, a, uh, a equal to, uh, and here it appears. Uh, actually, uh, the one difference between equal sign and arrow is that if you uh, use, uh, if you use functions, for example, you know this function like equal eight base equal two, right? You use equal sign there, not arrow. Uh, but uh, actually, you can even try to use arrow instead, but you will get a final result. So actually, you can see that you created uh, these variables and they were assigned as. Uh, uh, assigned to uh, parameters inside the function. Okay, just a small fun thing about R, but it's important because it's important to know uh, to to, to uh, know how to work with functions uh, because uh, R is a functional language uh, is a function is a functional language and uh, all the things about functions are very important in R. Uh, for example, uh, all these uh, operators that you already know, uh, for example, like uh, plus operator, it's basically a function. Uh, and actually all like fu uh, for function, uh, for loops and uh, function sign and so on, all these things are functions too. And every function is a first order object in R and we'll use it fact. It's not just a radical fact like uh, functions of first order uh, object in R, uh, but we'll use it somewhere else later um, for working in R. Uh, so, okay, like first order object means like uh, you can uh, create whatever uh, with functions with what you can do with other uh, with other objects like uh, ordinary variables. So you can even create a list of functions or you can use a function as an argument to functions and so on. And these things I used a lot in R. Okay, uh, let's go further. Uh, environment and here also you can see history just with a history of uh, commands that you run there. Uh, yeah. Another tab is uh, this tab, uh, where basically you can find some help for functions. Uh, so for example, you can find help for log function or other functions. Um, and it's something that you will really use a lot because uh, all functions in R are well documented, uh, even for uh, external packages. So every package on CRAN that you install using install packages will be uh, well documented with uh, good documentation for every function. Uh, 
Uh, otherwise, it will not be on crime. On crime. Uh, so, for example, yeah, I have my own package, but uh, I, I don't don't even try to put it on crime yet because it's not so well documented for now. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, also, you'll hear uh, uh, you will see here uh, plots uh, in plots of viewer. Uh, viewer mostly for uh, JavaScript based visualizations and plots for more simple uh, plots. Uh, and uh, we can even try to use something uh, to hear how it, uh, to, to see how it works. Uh, ah, okay, we will need to, to have some data first. Okay, we'll see, uh, we'll see uh, how it works uh, today. And here you can see some simple file manager. Uh, to navigate your files. Uh, so maybe you know that you can work uh, with RStudio uh, from cloud, like uh, RStudio cloud. And this uh, will be a bit different if you work it uh, from RStudio cloud. Uh, but if you have any problems in Strang R or RStudio, uh, you can run uh, it uh, from web browser without installing R and RStudio, just from the website. And everything will be the same except for this uh, tab. Okay, and here you can write some comments in console and get uh, results. Uh, but if you have many comments uh, or you have longer comments, uh, it's really easier to use script. So basically, script is just a like a, just a, a text file with the format dot r. Uh, that uh, contains some number of comments that you can run. Uh, so we can, uh, we will switch to working in scripts for now, uh, since now, uh, and there is a small difference uh, when you run uh, lines from um, a script uh, compared to when you run lines in a console that you need to press uh, control enter or command enter work on Mac instead of just enter. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go to, to uh, data frames, data frames, uh, data frames, data frames data frames somewhere yeah. okay I hope that it will it will work mm -hmm. right oh we have we have a lot of data there okay so uh, in uh, R you can import data with many different ways. The most uh, basic one is uh, just function read uh, But tell me, please, do you know what is CSV means? What CSV stands for? Well, do I need to explain it? File. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do I need to explain it? Because it's pretty much important point point when you work with data. And uh, if you don't understand this, if you, if you understand this, working with data will, will be much easier for you. And uh, so just write a plus uh, if you understand what is CSV or write minus if you don't understand and you need some explanation. What is it? But can you see how, uh, what, 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 <laughs> for what it stands for, what Vanya said? Can you repeat it, please? Please. So, I mean, okay, so I think I need to, a, a bit to, exp to explain what, what it is. So actually, let me go in the web browser. I will open it. I will open it. And uh, if you 
open it in web in web browser or download this uh, file. Uh, you can actually open it in a, uh, your favorite text viewer, text editor, uh, Notepad or Blacknote, or text edit or whatever. So just a simple text editor, and you'll see something like that. So basically, uh, CSV is a, the most famous format for storing uh, table tables. Uh, oh yeah, thank you. Uh, for storing tables. Uh, in a specific form where you where did you find this database? Uh, yeah, there is a link that uh, yeah, uh, there is a link that was sent by Ilya. You, you can open it too. This one, right? Uh, maybe it will be not open uh, on your computer, but just uh, download it right from the web browser. It's okay. Uh, and uh, if you download it, maybe uh, Microsoft Excel will try to open this file uh, because uh, maybe by default in your system, uh, C3 files are open with the Microsoft Excel because basically uh, it is a text format that try to store tables. Uh, in the way that uh, each row here is a, each row in the table and columns are denoted as like uh, separated by commas. So columns are separated by commas. So uh, uh, if you like, if you see, for example, for the first uh, few uh, like col columns, you can just uh, draw a line where you see commas and you will get the table, right? Uh, so uh, what is interesting about uh, comma separated values format that um, that, that uh, in some countries, including Russia and as far as I know, Germany, uh, we use uh, comma also as a uh, decimal point. So the point that uh, divide uh, full uh, like uh, mm, uh, in, uh, integer and uh, sorry. Uh, so the point that you use in numbers to, to divide uh, uh, what is more than, uh, okay, sorry. So uh, decimal point is a point that you use in uh, uh, numbers to divide. Uh, uh, write full and not full part of this number. Uh, in, for example, in uh, US and England, it's more used to be a dot instead of comma. Uh, so they use comma as a separator in C3 files and we need to use something other than uh, comma and we use a semicolon. Uh, and uh, this format where you use a comma as a uh, decimal point, as a, column, uh, as a uh, uh, separator uh, is also called CSV. But in case you have uh, this uh, CSV, of course, you need another way to read it. And in this case, you use function read CSV2 for uh, like Russian C3 format. Uh, so in case you have problems with reading some C3 file, uh, you use uh, this uh, trick to, to, to open it. Uh, actually, you can see help for uh, function CSV. And you can find out that read CSV, read CSV2, and other functions are just uh, uh, what's called wrappers. Uh, for function read table. So they're actually a function read table with some predefined, uh, some changed uh, default parameters for the function. And if you have problems with reading a file, you can uh, specify just one by one these parameters and uh, read the file. If you see some complicated uh, table uh, stored in a text file. It's pretty, I, I know it's a, it, 
it sounds a bit boring and this is a boring part of course but um like uh, importing files is uh one of the biggest pain in your ass when you work with uh when you work with data when you work with uh, r uh, sometimes just reading file is a biggest problem uh, that you can spend a uh, few hours on uh so yeah you need to know uh at least how formats can differ and what stands for this csv comma separated values right uh, okay let's return to our data so in r you can use uh even this like you can just write uh file paths to to uh, in your con uh, in your computer or you can just use a link and uh, import data directly from from a website even in basic R. Uh, so when you read this file using this function read csv uh, you will get a uh, data frame uh, so do you know what is a data frame in theory because uh, if you work in python you work in python you you probably work in pandas for example and you know this uh, structure. What do you know about it? Do you have any ideas? Well, it looks like an array, so probably two, two dimensional array. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, two dimensional list. Two dimensional list. Yes, but I mean, what is the difference here between array and the list? As a list in my uh, actually, I don't see it as a table, but as a list in my R. What do you mean, actually? Uh, can you um, so? Um, ah, okay. So uh, when I when you if you read this line, if you if you write this line, uh, df like uh, uh, gets read c three and something, you will get this uh, variable in the environment tab and you can just press it or you can write function view with uh, capital V uh, and get the same actually. Uh, and you will get this uh, built-in uh, viewer for data frames in RStudio because uh, data frame format is a basic format actually for working with data uh, so our studio has some uh, like a special instrument for that uh, so, so if you yep can you hear me okay yeah yep. uh, yeah i did everything as you but uh, uh, is the representation i have which is different and your one is like a table my one is I did the same, but uh, mm, I gave it a, like a list, like one famous dot sixteen dot child dot cool. is not a uh, okay. Maybe you can share the screen. Uh, uh, yeah, can uh, I, share the screen? Uh, I think I will stop my sharing so you can share your. Uh, okay. Yep. Ah, I select that. Mm hmm. Oh right, uh, because you used this the second uh, version of uh, uh, okay maybe because of this. Do, do you understand what's happening there uh, now? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so it's I mean when you get some crazy results, uh, it's important not just to get right results, but also to understand what led you to this result, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so here, uh, when you use read csv2, it uses a semicolon, like dot and comma, mm -hmm. uh, as a separator. Uh, and because it cannot find uh, any of that in the file, it just thinks that uh, every uh, everything is just one big column. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you use a separate comma, uh, that is used as a default in uh, function read CSV, not read CSV2. It will divide everything by uh, by uh, every column by column. But thank you a lot actually for this example because uh, it really uh, helps to understand 
uh, how this works. Uh, so these tables, they are not stored magically as tables. Uh, uh, they're actually text files that have some specific coding that shows that this is a column, this is the next row, and so on. Another uh, thing that is also used by default there is that the first row uh, is usually uh, column names. And it is, it is really like that in our file. So you can see that the first row is different from others and actually it contains column names. It is a default for, uh, for the format. So uh, it is a default, uh, it is a default um, behavior for XCS3 function too. Can I so, ask okay. you yep. how to print strelochka? Uh, good question. Uh, uh, if you have mark, you have option uh, option uh, minus. If you have uh, if you have Windows uh, or Linux, you have uh, Alt and minus. Mm -hmm. Look, I can do it many times. You know what? Oh. Uh, do you have? So what do you have? Uh, not mark. <laughs> not not mark. Okay, <laughs> just no, ordinary it's... computer. Yes. Uh, oh, okay, enough. no shame. I mean, <laughs> no, it's of course it's a joke, like uh, just it's a joke reflecting this. Uh, okay, uh, just al uh, alt and minus. Just try it to do it by itself until it works. Yes, it worked. Thank okay, you. or maybe control minus, maybe control minus because no, no alt minus. Alt minus. Okay, good, good. Because you know when you don't work for, I mean, I need to open a Windows computer to remember how to do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's return to the data frame format. Uh, so good, you have an idea that it's a, uh, it's an array, uh, it's a two-dimensional list, and you're right, you're all right, uh, but it is a bit more than that. So what is important to understand that, uh, of course, uh, RS are array format. So you worked with, uh, you worked with uh, uh, vectors, uh, they are so-called atomic vectors in R. Uh, and actually, I think you know that a vector is a like a basic uh, format in R. So in format, you don't have uh, you don't have scalar values. Every value is actually a vector, just a vector of length one. And so every time when you work with some just one value, you actually work with a vector of length one in terms of how R understand it. Uh, and for example, uh, there are so arrays and simple case of arrays that are called uh, matrices, matrices, uh, and they're quite, quite specific because uh, actually uh, matrices in R uh, is, uh, are just vectors with a, uh, mm, with a, a specific attribute uh, called uh, dim dimensions. Uh, I forget how it works actually. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, may I ask you a question? Yeah. And I wonder why this is called vectors because in I think that vector is basically like two two values uh, and a magnitude and like this value for a in your example seems like simply an array a range rather from one to ten. Uh, sorry, sorry I, I don't know that's the good question, but can I, I think can I answer? Uh, yeah. Can I answer? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, in mathematics, vectors are just a collection. Well, uh, when we study in school, we uh, we study uh, vectors that just like uh, arrow or, and uh, or two values, two coordinates, uh, or something like that. Uh, so we study vectors that live on plane. And uh, if you consider, uh, for example, three-dimensional space. Then in three-dimensional space, each vector is given by three values. Uh, it's just 
like a dot, it has three coordinates, like x, y, x, y, z. And uh, in mathematics, uh, especially in linear algebra, uh, you have multidimensional spaces. And in multidimensional spaces, you have vectors uh, that leave, um, well, it is impossible to imagine uh, these multidimensional spaces, but uh, in, this, uh, in this case, vector is just a collection of numbers, like in two dimensions in, in the plane, vector is just uh, a pair of numbers. So mathematically speaking, vector is a collection of numbers. And in R, uh, vector is even more general object. It is just a collection of uh, objects of the same nature, like a collection of numbers or a collection of strings. So that's, I think, I think that's the point of calling these things vector. Oh, yeah, thank actually, you. it's an important point because I usually talk about that because, uh, yeah, people come with different background and some people come some, like, uh, for example, they remember from physics that the vector is an arrow. Uh, and if you think about uh, it this way, uh, just imagine it uh, as an arrow in a two-dimensional space. Uh, and from uh, zero, zero coordinates to some point in the space. It can be two-dimensional, it can be three-dimensional, it can be n-dimensional. Uh, and it has like coordinates. So it goes from zero, zero to some point. And you can define this coordinate by two numbers, like x uh, and y. Uh, in this case, four and two. And now, if you imagine this picture, just I use a razor, just uh, erase uh, this plane, and now you have only these two numbers. So mentally erase this plane <laughs> in your mental space and just have these numbers because uh, in R vector is just a sequence of numbers or think of a sequence of uh, text values or sequence of logical values or think of a uh, sequence of row data, but we'll not talk about that. Uh, what is important about atomic vector? Yes, it's a bunch of objects in specific order. And uh, what is important, it's always one type of data inside a vector. That's a different uh, to what you use to work with uh, uh, in Python with list, for example. Uh, and actually, uh, uh, R also has lists, uh, and lists has no uh, uh, list have no uh, such limitations. So, in uh, if you have uh, uh, if you have vector, it must be only one type. For example, if you try to combine uh, in a vector different types of data, like three, two, and three. Uh, what do you think will happen? Any ideas? Well, we don't see the screen sharing. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you try to combine with the function C uh, several uh, uh, data of different data types, what do you think will happen? So it's going to crash probably or? No. No, but it's a good idea because in some like languages it will uh, lead to error. Uh, in some languages it will just uh, like combine different types. But as I said before, uh, vectors in R uh, can be only of one particular type. So in this case, uh, this will work uh, with implicit coercion, like implicit neprivigeni uh, tipov. So it it will coerce uh, data inside vectors inside. So remember this one, uh, this two is actually just a vector of length one. Uh, it will occur as all vectors to, to the one most common type. So you can convert numeric data to uh, character data, but not always you can convert uh, character data to numeric data. Just important think about the understanding of data structures in R. Uh, uh, when, uh, uh, when we work with a list, uh, of course, in R you have a list. You can combine different uh, data types or even, uh, yeah, or even vectors. Uh, 
and will work well. Uh, small L. You can even like combine uh, in a complex list, uh, more simple list. So I think in terms of um, uh, I think uh, in terms of uh, list behavior, it's more or less simple to Python, but uh, of course, there are some details. We'll not go uh, further for now, maybe later, maybe not, because uh, you basically don't want to work with lists in R. Can I ask? To... Yep, sorry. One more problem appeared that uh, I can <laughs> type strelochka only mm -hmm. in console like this, but in uh, uh, what is above? Uh, script, uh, script editor. Yep. Yes. I can't type it there as control plus plus Z and maybe alt minus. You don't need control plus, you need alt minus. Alt minus, yes, it doesn't alt. work. Wow, no. that's strange. Uh, it's really strange because I, I had never encountered, uh, encountered this problem before, but um, I think maybe you can, you can. Uh, share the screen. Uh, share the, the screen after uh, the seminar because we are limited in time a bit. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to okay. show you about data frames. Sorry, anyway, uh, you can use uh, equal sign for now. Anyway, uh, anyway, you can you can just uh, you can just type uh, less than minus, and it will be the same thing. It is not yeah. just a special character. It is just yeah. less than minus. Yeah, but it's like longer, good time. Ah, uh, I understand. Yeah. I, I did it. I did it. Yeah. But something went wrong and I thought that maybe it's about Strelochka, but no, it seems that not. Okay. Okay. So you can even combine it like small list and bigger list. Uh, uh, so basically list can have inside there everything. You know, you can it, you can even store functions if you want, or log, just because you can. Or maybe you will not use cell one because it was uh, taken by Blackstar. Sorry. Yep. Now it's correct, and we don't need to pay uh, <laughs> extra fees. Uh, so, sorry for this uh, reference to Russian rap music, but. Um, because I can. Uh, okay, uh, and arrays uh, in R are a bit different. Arrays and uh, matrix is, uh, in particular. It just uh, 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 actually uh, attributes uh, A. Uh, beam. I, I forgot how, how it works actually. So when I forgot something, how, how, how it works, I go to help or I go to Google and pretty much pay for me uh, and for everyone. So get all specific reach. Yeah. So if you say like for A, A, you remember it's just one to three, four, five, eight, eight nine, ten. Uh, it will be two and five, right? I think it will work. Yeah, I just added a dim uh, attribute to a vector and it became a matrix. Just, we will not, I think we will not uh, uh, work in, with matrix or with matrices later, uh, but it is important I think about, uh, to, to think about that because it helps you understand how R works. Uh, so if we work with arrays in R, it just uh, basically uh, is a vector uh, with a, a dimension game attribute. So just meta information that also I have rows and columns and please specify that uh, it is not just an, uh, a sequence, uh, but it's a, a table two by five and it's represented uh, now like that. Uh, you can, of course, you can create matrices uh, with a specific function and so on. 
and it's a better way to do that actually it's less esoteric uh but also if you have more than one dimension now you have to use more than one index for uh in indexing uh for subsetting uh your initial variable so if you did it uh for when you did it for simple uh let's create another simple uh vector b that will be two two nine and previously you can you could use it like uh you you could index it with a um with a, a simple number inside square brackets or you could use it uh you can you could use vectors uh, uh other numeric vectors to uh, uh subset uh, uh data from initial uh, from initial vector using a vector of indices also, uh, you can uh, use names if you have a named vector, but another important point that you can uh, uh, subset vector with uh, uh, logical values, true and false. Logical data type is a separate data type. So you have numeric character data and also logical. And uh, what do you think, what this comment will return? Any ideas? Mm -hmm. uh, we probably didn't discuss uh, this uh, kind of indexing. It, mm -hmm. it is a good idea to discuss it. OK, OK. Uh, so, we, so we can begin with values true and false, uh, mm -hmm. which we also didn't discuss. Mm -hmm yeah okay thanks so uh, uh but you discussed um logical operators right so no, no? no. so like uh, we didn't know that uh, okay so um, okay okay let me move <laughs> with upper uh so i will scroll a bit uh through this through this topic but uh of course in r you have uh, logical operators like you can compare values like two is less than three and if it's true you get true if uh, it, if it's false if uh, two is uh, for example if you do two more than three you you can get uh, you'll get false also you have uh, something like uh, you have comparison and you remember uh, you can use one equal sign to assign value to variable so because of that to compare two values you have you have to use two equal signs and remember that it's uh, quite uh important uh, like it's quite common mistake even even me sometimes uh, do this mistake uh, after years of reporting in R. And it's more or less the same, and actually, in all modern languages, that uh, for comparison, you have two equal, you do, uh, you write two equal signs. Uh, again, you can do a not uh, like you can use not equal sign, but not equal sign, like not equal. And here, instead of one uh, equal sign, you use uh, exclamation mark. And in general, exclamation mark means uh, uh, not in programming. Uh, so what do you think, what I will uh, get as a result of this comment? Two. Right. So two is not equal three, and that's correct, right? Okay, uh, yeah. And also, uh, you can see this true, false, false, and true. And uh, this is not just some results to uh, that you get into the console. You can store this value uh, in some variable, for example, some comparison it 
it seems a bit stupid for now. Like, why do I want to compare? Uh, why why do I want to save just one true? But remember that uh, um, R is a vectorized language, uh, and you can do it on vectors, and you will get uh, you will get uh, you, you can get a vector of this values and store and it's much more meaningful actually uh so you can save that value and you can see that uh now you have this here true and it's a separate data a data type in r uh so you have it basically six data data types in r uh free numeric uh integer fl uh, float and uh, double Oh, and uh, complex. Uh, you have uh, built in uh, support for complex numbers in R. Uh, character, logical, and row. It's a uh, byte uh, sequences. Uh, and row is a very technical thing that uh, like really small amount of people work with. Uh, so like uh, three group of them that are really important. Uh, numeric, uh, character, and logical. And for logical, you have two basic actually values, true and false. And that's basically all. And of course, you have you can have a vector of comparisons. Uh, uh, vector of logical uh, values. And here where the old power where the old power begins, where the old power power arises. Uh, for example, you can uh, store, uh, you, you can get uh, with a one line of code uh, comparison of a vector to a single value. And it will get like, like this. So uh, in case when you uh, compare, if you do operations on two vectors of different length, uh, the smallest one is repeated uh, the needed number of times to be compatible with a longer one. Uh, and in the case, if you have operation on a vector and a scalar, remember that a scalar is actually a vector of length, length one, and it's repeated like in he, uh, here 10 times. So uh, basically just compare one, a vector from one to 10 to a vector of 10, five, like five, 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 five. So uh, here you compare one to five, you get false, two to five, you get false, three to five, you get false, uh, four to five, you get false, five to, fell, uh, to five, you get false. It's important because uh, we did it like more than five, but we could also uh, use more or equal than five and it, will, it would get us a bit different result. You know, do you see the difference? Hey, do you see the difference between uh, the previous line and uh, in, uh, and the, the line number five and the line number six? What is the difference actually? And the, the result, I mean. In the result and where it comes from. Now the fifth element is true because yes. five equals five. Yes, exactly. So uh, now when we compare five to five, five uh, when we do five more or less, uh, more or equal, uh, more or equal than five, it is true because. It, at least it is, it is equal to five. Okay. Uh, and of course we can store this vectors of logical values and this trick uh, of using uh, 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 comparisons uh, to logical, uh, co comparisons uh, to some values and then using these results to indexing, indexing uh, uh, values is, is used a lot in R. So uh, basically, uh, 
uh, you can use uh, what was that like let's save it as a vector d uh, d is one two oh let's say it two 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 one right and uh, we compare the uh, d to like say four and get this uh, logical values and also we can use logical values to uh, indexing uh, vectors in R. In this case, it will give us, it works something like a filter. So you'll get, uh, on, uh, you will uh, return only values from the, from the original vector D, where uh, this vector have a, uh, has a true in a corresponding position. So here you have true, 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 like seven trues and then three falses. And it means that it will take the first seven positions of the vector D and omit everything else. Cool, right? It is really important thinking uh, when we work in R because this logic uh, is used a lot uh, not, only, uh, not only in uh, uh, when you work with vectors, but also when you work with matrices, with data frames, and whatever else, like complicated arrow, uh, arrays. So basically, uh, you can even write by yourself a uh, logical vector, but if a logical vector uh, is, uh, that you use for indexing uh, is shorter, than uh, original vector. In this case, uh, in this case, uh, recy recycling rule works too, and you actually get like true false, 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 true false. And actually, this comment will get you odd numbers from the vector, from the original vector B. Okay, okay. Mm. So let's go to uh, let's go again to our uh, matrix. So it was all about uh, actually uh, indecent matrices. Uh, so matrices uh, you can uh, when you have uh, more than one dimension, uh, you need to use uh, like two indices, one for rows and another one for columns. For example, to take uh, the first uh, row and first column, tadam, you have to, to choose one comma one. And of course, here you can use uh, vectors two. For example, you can use one comma three, four to take this square, like pi, uh, five, seven, six. No, you will get uh, five and seven only because uh, I have chosen only uh, the, the first row. And if you want to choose uh, all, for example, if you want to choose all rows, you can just uh, leave this play, uh, the place uh, for the index empty and you will get uh, all rows. Or otherwise, uh, for example, you want to keep all, comment, uh, all columns. So you'll keep uh, empty place after uh, the comma and we'll get all counts, okay? So, uh, what is important, uh, now we can move uh, a bit to data frame. So let's uh, make some uh, conclusion. To uh, let's sum up a bit what we learned so far uh, about data structures in R. So uh, what is the atomic vector in R? Can you can you explain to me? So it's a kind of data which consist which is which obligatorily consists of uh, elements of the same type. Yep, yep, exactly. Uh, in vector you you can have only one data type, 
and it's like one dimensional, uh, one dimensional. So you have only like uh, it's only sequence in one dimension. Uh, matrix is something like uh, overcoming of the limitation of one dimension. So in matrix, uh, you can have more than you, you have two dimensions. So you have not not only like a sequence, but you have rows and columns. But you still need to have only one that data type inside matrix. And it's not really uh, comfortable to work uh, with actually when you work with uh, real data. And we'll see it later. Uh, and in addition, you have lists that contain uh, different data types uh, inside them. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually a bit tricky how to uh, index them because we'll not consider it for now, uh, but you need to use, uh, usually to, you need to use uh, double square brackets there uh, to get the element that you want. Uh, yeah, and this lists I usually have some like complicated structure and they are somewhat avoided to use in R, but actually many different data structures or like actually like many, some um, complicated structures that you can find in R. For example, if you work with specific complicated uh, package, you will find out that actually they, what they use is a data structure that is a list with some additional attributes. We will not go to, into details uh, how to work uh, uh, OOP in R because some people think that uh, R has no OOP. It's false. Or R has uh, even three systems of OOP. Как тебе такое, Python? So it means okay. that we have classes in in R or what? For object-oriented programming. You, you, I mean, there are, I mean, really, we have three object-oriented programming um, uh, types in R: S3, S4, uh, reference classes uh, that is built in but not so used, and R6 is a, a development of uh, 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 reference uh, classes uh, that is used in uh, modern uh, machine learning applications, for example, in R. Okay, um, but, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I just suggest uh, to postpone. Uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just on point. Yeah, things. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and yeah, get, yeah. and because return to I, data frames. Yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah. Sorry, because I, I want to, to make it like interesting uh, also for people who has some experience with R uh, and who knows about like matrices, data frames, but maybe they'll learn something new uh, in this way. That's why I add some 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 extra things about like uh, some complicated things about R, but uh, they are not intended to be understood by everyone. It's okay. So it's important that you understand like uh, basic things and uh, get some experience working. In. So let's go to data frame. So data frame is a somewhat a combination actually of list and matrix. So uh, basically, uh, that a data frame is something like uh, this complicated structure that basically a list with specific attribute, uh, because basically a data frame is a, a list of vectors of the same length. Think about it, how it was said by famous uh, Russian poet five years about uh, five years ago. Uh, so you can see that you can represent this table as a list with vectors of the same length. So in this case, uh, it is a, a like a list of, uh, where is it? 12 columns, uh, 12, uh, 12 vectors. And each of this uh, vector contains uh, uh, 7,260 uh, values inside. So each column 
have one data, si uh, one data type inside, but different columns can have different data, uh, data, type, uh, data types. So for example, the first one is a, uh, is a character or factor maybe. I, actually, actually it, it depends on your version of R because there were a uh, very important recent development came like no more than one year ago. Uh, so try to do this function stir. Uh, stir is a function that you can get, to, uh, you can use to analyze structure of a list. So if you use it on list, you get something like a tree of uh, like a structure tree for your list, right? And if you use this function on a data frame, you'll see that it has a flat structure. So you have no list inside lists, usually at least. Uh, and every, uh, it's, a, it's even called the here data frame, not list. And every like uh, uh, vector here has uh, the same length, but different vectors have different data types. Uh, maybe some of you uh, 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 see, uh, maybe some of you see here, uh, not character, but factor. Uh, it's uh, the way uh, the, uh, that, uh, fuck, uh, that uh, some characters were coded previously, because uh, sometimes if you have uh, not big amount of values, uh, not big amount of variation in uh, uh, in a column. For example, male of a male, like here, it's some somewhat expensive. It's not memory efficient to just code every value for male and male for male and male and so on, like uh, as a character string. And that's why it was coded like, uh, for example, one and two, and it's cheaper to code. Uh, to, to, to store it this way. And it ha uh, had some dictionary that one is female or one is male and two is female. And this way is, it, it was cheaper to uh, store the data. Actually now uh, even character data are stored this way, uh, but uh, factors I used for somewhere, uh, sometimes for example, for plotting, so as a sum, somewhat uh, additional uh, data type. Actually, it's a numeric data type with uh, labels for numbers. Uh, it's used sometimes, sometimes for plotting. So uh, you need to be aware of this uh, data type at least. Uh, yeah, so here you can see character, integers. That's all, you, uh, there could be also some logical values uh, logical columns. Yeah. And what's important because uh, data frame is something like a mixture of uh, list and matrix matrix, you can uh, uh, subset uh, data frame, uh, both using uh, uh, rules for lists and for matrices. So for example, you can use indexing by two coordinates like this, or even like, I don't know, true, false. Uh, what actually this will return? What do you think? It's a bit complicated question, but it's very similar to what we did here. And as I said, uh, indexing data frame is very similar to indexing with uh, uh, indexing matrix, matrix. So uh, what do you expect to get there? So let's go uh, line by line. So we can uh, use uh, indexes uh, for data frames using like two dimensions, like the first one before the comma, uh, it's uh, for selecting rows. And the second one is for selecting commas. 
Uh, so let's go from the more simple part. Uh, what uh, what we do for selecting com uh, for selecting columns? What columns will we select here? Maybe all of them? Yes, right, right. So if you don't specify what you, uh, what you select, uh, you, you get actually everything. And so we select all columns, right? It's pretty common. We, we don't want to lose columns. We want to select some rows here. And what rows you'll select here? That's a bit more complicated, right? But we have it uh, more or less the same with a vector. So as I said before, this uh, rules that we discussed for uh, index and vectors, uh, they use not only for vectors, but also for data frames. That's why it's, that's so important to learn about them. And you will use it a lot, this logic to extract some data from uh, from your data frame. It will be the major part of your work with data, I think. Any ideas? Okay, so if you have any, uh, you have no ideas, so uh, just remember what, uh, I, I will just do it again. So we have a vector B we have uh, uh, this indexing with uh, uh, true-false. And here, uh, this vector of true-false is actually repeated five times because uh, original, data, uh, original vector is five times longer than this vector true-false. Uh, and it becomes like true-false, 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 true-false. And actually it like filters the original vector and it takes only odd values from the original vectors. So it returns two, four, six, eight, right? So let's return to uh, our Sorry, I had some Somebody called me for my phone. So what do you think will happen now here for data frame? Just have an idea, don't be shy. Uh, because if you have a wrong idea, it will be better for your learning than when you have no idea at all. And uh, sometimes I expect you that you have wrong ideas because you come with, from different background, from different language. And I want to show you the difference how it works differently from other languages that you used before. Okay, so, uh, I think, uh, if we, yep. Uh, here's the uh, old row. Sorry? Old can you, uh, uh, the, the sing, single number rows, um, the first, the uh, third, fifth, the uh, old row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it will it will uh, extract the first, the third, fifth, seventh, and so on. So all uh, odd, right? Odd rows of the original data frame. Let's see how it works. Right. Uh, we need to check it. How how it? Yeah. It, it even shows like uh, it was the first, the third, five, and so on. So. Uh, Actually, all rows are very similar, so <laughs> we don't have we don't see many uh, difference there. But we can check it by, for example, word, for example, by column uh, stimulus. So we take uточнить, uh, then внешнить, освежить, удомлить, and so on. So all these uh, odd rows from data frame. So it's just a trick. 
It's one of many tricks that uh, you'll use when you work with uh, uh, data frames in R. Uh, so it's basically, uh, like I need to, 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 to check one thing before we continue. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah, another po uh, important point that uh, we can work uh, we can work with it uh, as a uh, with a data frame as a uh, uh, matrix, but also uh, if we uh, we can work it uh, with it as a, it was a list, so. Uh, Especially if it were uh, like uh, like it was a named list. Uh, so for named list, uh, let's do some simple um, example. Let's create a named list. It will be uh, like uh, letters, and it will be a and B and uh, numbers and it will be one to 10. As I told you before, um, indexing, vec uh, index indexing uh, lists is a bit more complicated and it is, uh, it's a bit tricky, but uh, one important feature about uh, indexing lists is that you can index them by uh, names uh, in a very specific way with a, this dollar sign. So actually, if you have more uh, complicated list, you can even like have uh, named L dollar letters, dollar something else, and so on. If you have like complicated tree structure of a list, and you can use the same syntax on da uh, data frames too. So you can use it like the F H, and you got all H from this uh, data frame, right? So uh, a lot of your work with data frames is based on these tricks uh, of indexing. For example, if you want to take, uh, for example, uh, now it's, so if you uh, extracted it as a, uh, uh, this way, now it is a vector. So now you can work it like you can extract only uh, uh, ages that are more than more or equal to 18, right? Or you can even subset from the original data frame. For example, you want to delete all participants who are less than 18 years old. Seems quite logical, right? So you can use it like this. You extract this uh, numeric uh, numeric uh, uh, vector H uh, compared to 18 and uh, use it, this logical vector, it is a logical vector, to select rows from original data frame, right? And in the in this trick you will, you will use a lot because it's a very basic uh, R operation. And in the, in the end of the uh, seminar, I want to show like, the thing that you have learned uh, during the lecture and how to use like a uh, uh, simple uh, statistical uh, functions uh, because you know, R is basically language that were created for data analysis and statistics. So of course you have a built-in uh, statistical functions and you can calculate like mean, uh, standard deviation. It, actually, it will be sample standard deviation. Uh, you can even uh, uh, create a formula by yourself and check it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you can even try to do it by now, it's not that complicated. So uh, you compare it to mean. So you first you uh, substitute uh, mean 
h from this vector. Then you calculate square root of this value, right? Uh, then you calculate sum of it and you divide by uh, length of this vector. Uh, to get population uh, uh, variance and uh, or, or divided by length uh, by n minus one to get uh, to get sample variance. And then uh, to get standard deviation, what uh, instead of variance, what you need to do next, what you need to do uh, on this, uh, to this result to get standard deviation from variance. Get square root. Yeah, exactly. Square root. Uh, if I hope that, uh, I mean, usually if I do some mistakes, uh, I'm very afraid that everything is, uh, is fucked, but uh, now, now, now I have Ilya that will at least support me and uh, find mistake early on. Yeah, and we get uh, uh, the same result. So yeah, you can see that uh, this standard deviation, uh, standard deviation function actually uh, get uh, uh, sample standard deviation by formula that we use. And also, we can, oh, you have, like, we have different breaks, right? Cool. Uh, uh, the very final function that we'll use now. Oh, yeah, we have also, of course, uh, a function for variance. Uh, I think it's, like, uh, obvious, but... I don't know. In case you need it, and to will uh, I will show you very simple function for uh, plotting because uh, actually uh, R has a beautiful gplot two in uh, uh, in our ecosystem. It's basically part of Tidyverse ecosystem to plot uh, to plot data, and it's not just like something that do say some nice visualization. It's as a, actually as a something like as a separate language that try to describe and create graphics. It's much more than just like a package that plot lines. So it's, and, but as for now, for example, in, uh, in Python, you have more or less a good port uh, called plot nine. And I, I checked it's a bit similar, but it's of course it's a port. So it couldn't be better than original, you know? Uh, I, I know there's are some list comparisons because you know there is a, some something like a Python monopoly, Python gigamony, uh, like paid by Yandex and you know other things, and other uh, companies. But R is a beautiful language, really. People really say something. Oh, there is something like that in in R. Yes, of course. We yeah, not from like. A, beginning of the uh, 19th century. Yes, we can do histograms too. Actually, that's the main goal of it. Uh, yeah, so uh, you, can, uh, you can see that uh, you can, uh, you will get plot in this uh, uh, tab plots and you, you can see this histogram. I think more or less Histogram is very like simple thing to understand. I think that uh, you you have you divide all your data by some like cut points and calculate number of uh, uh, points that you have in these intervals. Uh, yeah, so that's all. Actually, thank you a lot. Uh, I'm sorry that we are a bit out of time. Uh, and I hope you 